I rather condone or uh, abide by this fucking recording session happening in my fucking kitchen. Psychedelic space beef band. God damn it. Awesome. Thank Welcome you guys. To the show. This Thank is you. the Lost Beat Six Show. We're back for the uh, second season here in 2017. Yeah. Steve, why don't you go ahead and introduce our guests? All right. Well, we're here with the group Rosens and Cigarettes, our good Hello. friends Jenny and Angela. Hi. How's it going? Good. Great. Thanks Thank for having us. Yeah, this is the uh, first episode, season two. Season, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Sweet. I guys. love it. Love yeah. It yeah. Off. We're here enjoying some nice margaritas made by Jenny, so I got to say props to you. You're welcome. They are delicious. <laughs> And uh, so what was the name of that song? That was called Drive In, and it's the first track on our album. All right, awesome. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be talking about that album in a little bit. So, Steve, why don't you uh, go ahead and start us off? So you'll be at the 2017 Winter Nam Show in Anaheim, (laughs) California. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, we'll be playing there on a Friday night. A Friday night. Yeah, at the Sheraton Acoustic Stage. For all the wonderfully drunk salesmen 
at the, the <laughs> who we are very excited to they meet. Were, they'll be great. I'm exactly. sure they will people. be very nice, and we are very excited. <laughs> they will be in lovely, ready to hang out time. They'll I'm be, sure they'll be after in, they were working so hard on. I know, and Friday's yeah. a busy day over there. That so is I'm the, sure that's the big night. Most of the after parties on Friday night. Oh, okay. Because the Saturday is the the last night, and everybody's tired. Right. Oh, yeah. Thursdays are always really, everybody's nice and fresh. They're all pumped. They're ready to go. Friday right. is like, all right, we're going through it. We're getting through it. And it's like. Oh, yeah. Saturday, everyone's done. Saturday, we're like, okay, let's just get to Sunday. And Sunday, nobody cares. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. Many, many moons ago, I used to work for a comic convention company. And yeah, <laughs> by the time it was Last Sunday, day. I'm like, I'm yeah. ready to go home now. Yeah. Sundays, <laughs> you're, if you're not sick, you're tired. If you're not tired, yeah. you're not there. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's if you're not tired. You didn't do it right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 11, was, it, was it 11 o'clock? You said. Yeah, 11 p.m. at the Sheraton Acoustic Stage. Okay. We oh, wow. how, we how shall be there. How late is the uh, convention open? I okay. I think I don't know what exact time the convention closes, it closes but I know around it's six pretty late. Okay, for, uh, so all the after parties and stuff. So we'll be yeah, okay. we'll be making some music there <laughs> on the acoustic stage at the Sheraton. We're looking forward to it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's when we did uh, Sabaton. Uh huh. In in August. It's basically like everybody's kind of around. Everybody's kind of hanging out at the on the lobby area and the bar, and everybody's sort of. It's everybody's right. kind of just decompressing. Okay, gotcha. And so they have acts going on all all day, all Sweet. night. So it's it's a great little time, and that's usually when time. That's the time everybody gets to commute and hang out and sort of just unwind. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, it'll be fun. That's a good. It should be a good time. We're looking forward to it. We yeah. are. So, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll try to make sure to get Friday off so I can. Uh, yeah. So I, you you said you've you've been to the show before. Oh gosh, five years ago. Five years. I was there. A friend of mine scored me a ticket, and I was very very excited, mm-hmm. and checked out the Fender booth, and was super stoked. That all yeah. the custom shop stuff is really really neat. Um, but yeah, just walked around. Just the, the size of it is just crazy. Yes. You know, it's yeah. just because it's such a huge convention center too. It's it's. I think if they had to expand it anywhere, they had to be in Vegas or somewhere. It's this Anaheim's the only yeah. one that could hold it. It's. Right now. It's a blast. It was fun walking around all the, you know, the big elevators and stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, looking forward to performing there this year. I've only yeah. gone as a as a fan, but yeah. So I don't I don't know. You, and you have you have um, sponsorships. I am a, working. I'm player. working alongside Fender and Diodario. Yes, okay. they have been very good to us and to Hell the yeah. band. And yeah, they we're, hook you up we're with stoked. strings and stuff. They or? do. Nice. They do. And I I blow through them like crazy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so. We we did a show. Tell them about the mint. Remember, oh, remember that sent, story. Well, oh, and the, where I snapped the string. Uh, yeah, she had a dream. She brought two guitars, which was like rare in case unless we were doing like a bunch of changes. She mm-hmm. usually only would bring one for a thirty minute set at the mint. But she brought two because she had a dream that she had a string pop in the middle of. Um, our set and the second to last song, bam, string pops. Damn. Her brother was in the back. We were like, let's switch out the guitar. Like, you got 30 minutes at the mint. Like, you don't have time if a string pops. Like, yeah. yeah. Figure yeah. it out. <laughs> but there's, I think there's a picture of the moment that it happened, and you just see Jenny's face, and I was like, dude, told you. Told you. I was like, hey, you said it was going to happen. Wow. Yeah, it was. But yeah, I, I, I love their strings, though. Yeah, no, I, I, lo- I, I, I absolutely love their strings, and. Happy, happy to be working with them. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So they've been very, very yeah, good. Angela was genuinely using their strings. Before oh yes, I've been with using them. their strings. It wasn't. She didn't switch over to work with that. Like, no, no, no. Genuine, no. Genuinely I've been using their users. strings over ten years, and I just mm-hmm. absolutely love them. That's great. So ha- yeah, I'm actually yeah, I'm using their new nickel bronze on my acoustic. Right now, I opened up and I was I was I was you know talking to the guys over there, and I opened up the case, you know, and I, I busted open the plastic and. Um, I noticed they were all silver. I'm like, oh no, they got like, they like, got old or they tarnished or something. And then I was reading up on them. I'm like, oh, duh, they're yeah. nickel. Okay. <laughs> and I love them. They're nice and soft. And apparently they last a really long time. So great. Very excited. About I it. know you have to, you're making visits to those booths and as a, as a performer or an artist. I'm sure I will be going over there to say hello. Okay. And all of that good stuff and seeing what's new. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. And do you have to also appear at Fender as well? Sorry? You have to make an appearance at Fender or kind I'm just of check going, in with just them? I'm just going as a fan. Okay, cool. Just going as a fan. That's great. Yeah. So, yeah. very, very excited awesome. to see what's new. I, this may be a question later down the road of how you acquired those sponsorships, because that's kind of something that I'm not really familiar with. And we have it's a kind very of awesome manager. To get familiar with. <laughs> yeah. We have a very, very great manager. Oh, that's right. So, yeah. yes, we, we are very, very lucky. <laughs> the three of us will be there. Okay. And so we're... we're I'm, I'm usually the yeah. I, I haven't been before, so it'll be first time experience. 
So we're, I, I'm usually the regular. I've been going since the last three or four years. Yeah. It's, it's a regular thing. It's something yeah. like a, uh, I look forward to it every year. It's going, oh, this is great because I've been able to, you know, grow a relationship with people. Oh, absolutely. On the, you know, just people, oh, yeah, so good to see you. How have you been? Is, are you working? And it's so, yeah, it's good. Yeah. We're working. It's cool. And this will be Jenny's first time. She hasn't been yet. Yeah, oh, I excellent. haven't gone yet. Yeah, it's oh, totally fun. So we should. I mean, I'm a singer. That's not like you're not, you're not like, oh, I need strings. Like, <laughs> right. Angela's like, we got to find a sponsorship for you. I'm like, what do I, like, what do I, my, for my vocal cords? Like, I don't know. <laughs> you might Eventually you a microphone or something. Microphone. Yeah, yeah, get some like really, thing. really good mics and some like in ears yeah. that's or Hell something. Yeah. But, so usually the microphone companies are usually looking for yeah. vocalists to kind of show, especially the boutique ones will look for singers yeah. make to, it, to make pipes the to show off pretty. there. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that'll be good. It's you never uh, know. what's, what's your favorite part of it? If, if you had oh, to. Oh gosh. My favorite part of it. I like running into people. Yeah. That I haven't yeah. seen in a while. That is cool. I, that's my favorite. Like I'll be, you know, I was, I was walking around, I was playing some guitar. I don't remember. And, saw a friend of mine who mm -hmm. I hadn't seen in years uh, when I used to play guitar I would I would cut my teeth at this bar in, in Torrance California it was called the crest and I used to play blues guitar there all the time yeah. I was like 16 years old and my guitar teacher used to take me there mm -hmm. on like Wednesday nights nice. while I was in high school and wow. um, yeah one of the um, one of the guys who, who taught me a lot of tricks I saw there and it was it was pretty cool so it was good to see him it's good to see him. But yeah, running into people. Yeah, that's like. usually the people more. For me, it's the people more than the gear because it's just fun to talk to the people. Yeah. You know, you'll run into, like, I think I ran into Mike Drint. Who's the Green Day drummer? Mike Durnt. Mike Durnt. Mike Durnt. 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 Yes. Mike Durnt. Yeah, I ran yeah. into him at the AEA. <laughs> I'm really good friends with the people at AEA. Yeah. And I think he was checking out the microphone. I'm like, that guy looks familiar. And this tech, he's like, yeah, yeah, you should. You probably would be like, is that the Green Day guy? You're like, yeah, yeah, it's him. Okay, <laughs> cool. I'm not a Green Day fan, so it's hard to like when you see them in in the flesh. You're like, oh gosh, I love them. You know, it's it's <laughs> sort of a it's sort of I like do. yeah, I, I know you. <laughs> I think uh, Ryan Pressman and I got bumped off uh, the Neve Rupert Neve Designs console yeah. by Stevie Wonder once. Oh, I don't know <laughs> who he yeah. is, but yeah, I, his bodyguard. Never, like, Stevie Wonder. I, never heard. I have. Him. Yeah, I, I wish him good luck in, like, in all his musical endeavors. Yeah, yeah. That's actually that's the biggest thing. So you'll you'll eventually run into him. That's like a it's like him and Victor Wooten. You'll always run into them. I've I've heard yeah. Stevie is there often. Yeah. And he's yeah. always there, and you'll see him because you'll it's he's like Jesus, where you're just like <laughs> you'll like you'll see this crowd following this one guy. Yeah, and um, he'll be totally just like. Oh, it's Stevie. It's just, just massive people, you know, just sort of there. That's so, awesome. Um, but Stevie Wonder is always that kind of like, uh, yeah, he's he's always, yeah, he's always there. And you're like, oh, it's almost at a, at a non, like a, you know, whatever. The one thing was like that was kind of interesting. We almost got to, we photobombed Keith Emerson at the Moog Moog oh, booth. Oh wow! And we it was the line was too big to see him when he was there. Yeah. And uh, or to get we were like kind of like, oh, we want to talk to him. And we were sort of like we would be cutting like about a good 50 people mm -hmm. waiting in line to see, see him and like shake his hand and stuff like that. And it's like and then I saw my uncle kind of run around the side of the there's like a plywood um, fence, plywood wall kind of open. That was the theme of their booth that year. Uh, it was like some sort of construction sort of thing. And I could see him poking and we we're so we just oh, that's a well, photo bomb. And so that's our only interaction with Keith Emerson. And that's now we can't great. have any anymore because he's fucking dead. So, yeah, you so got like, one. Such a shame. R.I.P. in pieces. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, yeah, he was, the, he was part of the meme year there. Yeah. But um, how many people died? Probably like like 30, like very notable celebrities. Right. It was ridiculous. But um, most of them I didn't give a shit about, so I didn't really care. But, you know, sure, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I have to say it was notable. But um, So that, that's, a, that's a good, that's a, people is great. It's yeah, favorite, yeah. So. Looking forward to it. What's your least favorite thing? My least favorite thing. We need to we need to be full. We need to be completely honest and transparent about to everybody who hasn't been. Which is just I think it's just you and me. So everybody else. Oh gosh. Else's. Okay. What do we have Le to? What do you have to? I would say I was, probably, I think you said the crowds. Last yeah, time I was gonna say talked. the crowds are a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I. I used to I used to work in conventions and I would always stay away. Yeah. <laughs> I'd stay and I'd I'd just totally pound the vitamin C and yes, all of that because yeah. it is there are a lot of germs floating around you just got to be mindful of, yeah. of all of that yep there's a, every, a lot of people yeah. 
Uh, there's always but, that Nam Goo or Nam Nam Goo or Nam Juice. They have that little like what? Everybody, every booth will have like a little bottle of hand sanitizer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they that call you it have like to. Nam Goo or whatever. I thought you were talking about some like you know grimy you to, yeah. like yeah. thing yeah. that had like you know gotten a nickname because it was everywhere. Like no, Nam no. Juice. I was like, uh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no you, you want the Nam Goo. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But um. Well, I've never used any of that at any conventions, and I've always been fine. So I think it, the more you I just use don't get the hand sanitizer, often. the more sick you get. Actually, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, you are you're killing I all totally, the good bacteria that fights off infection. I so I'm like, it. oh, that goo's lovely, but yeah. it's making everybody sicker. Right, <laughs> like, right. It's a it's a it's misnomer. Yeah. yeah, it's a I, misnomer. Totally. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I'm with you. I never get sick of these things. I, I, shit. I never end up sick afterwards. Nope. Yeah. I've been sick from a convention once. Probably a higher risk of yeah. the ones I go to anyway, you know. Just like <laughs> <laughs> Rather than like yeah, actual like those high class yeah, conventions. More of the, yeah, more no. the, the anime, anime tier. <laughs> yeah. should, sh- I should be getting sick. But no. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, there um, were so many germs that it just sterilized you, actually. <laughs> right. yeah. The other thing, I, it's the crowds, and there's always specific people in those crowds that are always, for me, that are always, it's, it's strange. It's obnoxious. Uh, just, just obnoxious enough where they, they have that sort of Comic-Con vibe to them. Oh, my friend, I can tell you all about that. <laughs> so all I those, know exactly what those you're about. Those guys who dress up like war. Oh. And the uh, you know those guys are like <laughs> really? there are, and they're like, what are you doing they're, here? They're Why are you so... wearing a full guitar suit? Like, yeah, there yeah. is stuff at Comic Con that you just cannot. When you see it, you just can't unsee it. Yeah, uh, they, make, they make all the yeah. Princess Leia cosplayers look really tame. I was thankful to see someone as Princess Leia. Some of the, the crazy. At the damn show? No, no, no. Oh. It's just at Comic Con. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, yeah. It'd be awesome to see someone as yeah. Princess Leia. I hope so. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. If Chewbacca isn't there, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> if Leia's there, we and missed Chewbacca him at Disneyland by like ten minutes so too. And apparently those guys have chips at Disneyland. Like, all the characters have oh, chips, so you know where they are in the yeah, park. Yeah, Wow. Awesome. Yeah. We missed them. Next yeah. time. Maybe they'll chip you at Nam. Maybe they will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Angela Petrilli music. Where'd she go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god! I'm so gonna do that. I'm gonna check That's you probably a good sleep. reason Instagram's losing their maps maps feature for you. That's probably for yeah, the best. No oh kidding. yeah, oh turn that off. turn that feature off. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of. Oh god! Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. Never know. So that's good. Is there anything you're looking to see? I, I know you already. We already kind of discussed that. Oh god! But like for anybody who's not not here. So Eric, I don't know if you're looking to what something you're looking to see. I have no idea what I'm in for, so I'm just gonna follow you around. Okay. Well, we know we want to stop I mean, by I'll... Martin. Mm-hmm. Okay, Martin. Yeah, we're yep. going to stop by Martin, Diodario, and Fender. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are our three planned stops, but I think besides that, we're just kind of kind of... Yeah, and some yeah. friends in the pedal world. Oh, mm-hmm. yes. Actually, I... yeah, pedals might be something I'm, I'm yeah. going to look for. I haven't bought a pedal in freaking years. So. Yeah. I, I just... Um... That's an interesting thing. You'll, you'll, because there's also a lot of boutique stuff. That's probably the best part about the whole thing. Right. Is that you'll see stuff that you're like, why haven't I heard about you? Like, like, because there's nobody. You know, you see all all the main stuff from a guitar center or a right. I mean, because the whole the whole purpose is for all the guitar centers. All yeah. these music stores are are there to make deals to sell their stuff and yeah. market it and all that sort of thing. So they're all they're all actually doing business. Oh yeah. And we're just kicking it. Yeah, <laughs> so, but um, there's there's always like I think there's often the place the place to check out is the E. There's like the basement level, is where all the boot. There's a lot of boutique sellers there. Mm-hmm. Is that like the Artist Alley equivalent of uh, of Nam? I, I might. It's close to it. Artist like, Alley. Oh God, I'm forever. <laughs> oh Jesus, I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we won't talk about the celebrity zoo. We kind of already just kind of <laughs> just no, discussed no, no. that. Just that was always a very busy part. Yes. Of yeah. Comic Con, I just remember I had to walk through there, and I'm like, oh, walking God. through Artist Alleys is awful. Yeah. The artists in the Artist Alley were always very nice, and that's, yeah. That's, oh yeah, but yeah, just like okay, Ange, we need you to go and 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 bring this over to this artist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You go. You hold your breath and you run. You go. You drop it off. You go back. And it wasn't. It was. Was it always in the lower levels of the basement? <gasps> Um, yeah, the most sweaty, most grimy parts. It was like kind of in the in the back a little bit. Okay, sort of. Okay. Gosh, yeah. So that's where it is at AX, and you know it, it fits for yeah what it is. for AX. I'm sure Comic Con has a more of a it's more featured for for those sort of things. You have the banners up, and you can, yeah. you can see it and stuff. Yeah, that's but good. Yeah. Fun um, stuff. Yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. 
But yeah, Martin Looking for sure. To. Martin Diodario Fender. Um, yeah, some cool pedal stuff. Yeah. 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 Experience. It's, yeah, it's going to be, I would suggest just um, obviously drinking a lot of water. <laughs> I think you should. I would suggest pre-gaming with a lot of alcohol beforehand, but that's that's my way of doing it. Yeah, uh, although for Nam it's a little more serious. It's not like AX. It's fu- it's so fun though. Yeah, Nam's really the, fun. They, you can buy the you can buy alcohol. I mean, it's, I'm expensive. not going to buy there. Yeah, yeah of fuck course. That. I'll yeah. bring a fader aid. Yeah, all right. A proper con goer. Okay. <laughs> He's also going to be chipped, so you can find him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're thirsty. <laughs> yeah. And then a uh, of fader aid. Give it about like 15 minutes for the sensory overload. It's like kind of like going into like, you know, like Saving Private Ryan in the D Day. Mm-hmm. And like first, first, like. <laughs> just like that. Just, just like, like that. that. You, you you had, that scene where it's like, their guts out. That kind of shell shock moment where you, everything's sort of. All different filtered. kinds of music. You're like, oh, well, it's yeah. awesome. See, that drives me crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. That'll be hard for me. I'll be like, ah, ah, I know. Too many senses. You'll, know, hear, you'll hear Donald Fagan half the time, Daft Punk half the time, you know, depending <laughs> on where you go, because they're going to yeah. try to test their systems out. Um, but yeah, just give it like a 15 minutes to sort of just walk around and right. not, not worry about anything and just let it take just you. Walk. Let it <laughs> just, just walk and adjust. Yeah. Just, mm-hmm. just let it take you and just like mm-hmm. a hamster on a wheel. Just yeah. keep going until <laughs> you feel comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That's enough. Nothing I think about Nam. I have a good Nam. You guys want to play one more, another song? Sure. sure. All right. good for so long now Lord I need a change showed up right on time I was like a moth to a flame like that first shot of whiskey running Should have looked for shelter. Knew when storm was coming, but I couldn't help but want the pain. Saw the clouds darken, heard the thunder start to roll the first time. You said my name. Spent the night together. Day after that, I was addicted to him, but I knew it wouldn't last. I cried out, Heaven, help me! But I knew I was too far. Storm is coming. 
right. That was That's great. great. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, guys. What's the name of that one? That one is called Shelter. Shelter. All right. Yes. Is that one uh, also on the new album? That is on our debut album. Debut yes. album. Yes. All right. Self-titled. It's called Roses and Cigarettes. All right. It's on iTunes, and we have a Pandora station. I saw it in Amoeba. Spotify. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Hell it was yeah. Amoeba. Nice. That's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. We were stoked pretty awesome. about that. That was cool. <laughs> Yeah, we had someone send us a picture of our of it on display. <laughs> no, yeah, it was, was that cool. you? Or, no, no it was the, you know what? It. it was the. Um, it was Kevin. Was it? I thought um, Kevin Golden and Golden West. West. Right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and yeah. another buddy sent one too when he was there. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. that. It was like kind of a special local thing. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was all. Yeah, shout out to Kevin Briggs for making that happen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin Briggs yeah. made that happen. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty awesome. So, we should probably start from the very beginning. Yeah, if you so, want to just uh, talk about the formation of the band and how... Where, how where, where are you all from? Sure. Yeah, I'm originally from the East Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, I've lived in L.A. for, uh, oh, God, 12 years? 13, how old am I? 13 years. <laughs> I've lived in L.A. for 13 years. I will not reveal my age, but I have lived in L.A. for 13 years. Um, but I'm originally from the East Coast, yeah. And then Boston area, New England. Boston area, yeah. Cape Cod. Um, I lived in Florida too. Oh, okay. Um, I think that's that's probably where I picked up my my love for country in high school. All right. Um, there was a lot of Dixie Chicks happening, and yeah, it was a very sense. popular time with Dixie Chicks and Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. <laughs> that ages me well. <laughs> um, so I got super into that all in high school. Um, and then I moved back to New England, and then moved out here. And what was the mode of for the singing, um, okay. you know, my my mom was an actress, um, mm-hmm. and my dad always did music. Um, and my older sister was um, like musical theater; she starred in everything, you know, okay. um, all around our town. And so my sister had moved here, and then my mom was actually living here at the time. Um, and I have an aunt that lives in LA as well. So I knew I wanted to do singing. I also um, worked in the fashion industry for a bit. Okay. So I was kind of like, well, I had already lived in New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, not so, LA. Yeah. I had family here. I knew I could, you know. What did you think of New York? Weather's not bad. I love it, and I fantasized about moving back there for forever. You just need a lot of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, to make it convenient. It, listen, living in LA is not inexpensive. I mean, every <laughs> artist in LA works very hard yeah. to live there. Right. Um, and chase their dreams. It's exhausting. Mm. But um, Manhattan and, and New York is... It's even harder because you're fighting weather elements and you don't have a car and you don't, you're like having to, if you're tired or you're sick, like the only way to get anywhere is to either spend $30 on a cab Mm -hmm. to go four blocks or walk to the subway and wait for the train and in 19 degree weather, if you've got a cold, like it's not exactly fun. So would you say that's more of a supportive town than Los Angeles or, or, um, yes and no. Um, I would say there are a lot of misconceptions about New York. I think people think New Yorkers are very cold. Uh, People think East Coasters are very cold and quick and rash. And we kind of are, but it's, we're just, it's just a quick, it's just different from the West Coast. There's a much more like, Mm -hmm. lackadaisical thing here that like 13 years Uh, into living here, like I'm (laughs) I'm kind of getting it down. Understanding it takes 45 minutes to get across town anywhere in town. Or like just because it's a running business doesn't mean it will be open at 11 a.m. on a Monday, (laughs) like, or anybody will be working. Like I don't, I still can't figure out the traffic patterns. Like, yeah. You know, so um, I don't know if it's more supportive. I wasn't doing a ton of music while I was there. I was in college. It was my freshman year of college. So um, I can't really compare the two musically. But they're just totally different. They're they're totally different cities, but they're they're both great for such different reasons. Mm -hmm. It was just for me like a lifestyle thing of like, I kind of want my car and I kind of want (laughs) to go for hikes. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a Um, good point. Yeah. And Angela, you are local. I am. I am a native a nim- Los uh, Angeles. Yeah. Los Angelino. Los Angelino. Angela from Los Angeles. Yeah. Not a transient. And I'm not. I was. I was born in Redondo Beach. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the LA thing is. Yeah. Went to went to high school and college here. Went to UCLA. Yeah. It's pretty. Life. Pretty impressive. Life kept me here. There have been a few moments where I was going to move and then things kind of happened that kept me here where would you have moved if you don't mind me asking oh gosh i was ready to move to san francisco yeah i was gonna go i was going to go to uc berkeley for college and ucla was my dream school and i'm like let me just wait and see if i got in before i 
tell them yes. Berkeley was your fallback? Berkeley was my fault. God, does that make me sound like a jerk? <laughs> no, you just really wanted to go to UCLA. Um, That's more impressive than than, than Berkeley. Uh, Berkeley, yeah. Gosh, I never thought of it like that. So Berkeley was my fallback. I wouldn't say that was a jerk being a jerk. It's just um, very ambitious. But yeah, I, I I got into I got into both and made the Berkeley. So Berkeley, yeah, UC Berkeley, not Berkeley Music. No, oh, yeah, um, good point, good point. Yeah, um, but yeah, UCLA was my dream school, so. Went with that That's and great. loved it and was very happy with the decision. And, and yeah. you, you got a degree in, in um, was it marketing? I got a degree in communications. Communications, okay. Mass, mass media and interpersonal communication. And That's good. Loved it. Loved I every need, class. I need work on that. We should... You should uh, absolutely. I, I, I can't absolutely. connect. I need to connect with people. Yeah, <laughs> lots of there. there we there need was, listeners. Is what you say. <laughs> yeah, like you know, learning how to. You know, I took classes on learning how to read body language, and you know, and all of this stuff. And it, it's a lot of it was good, and then a lot of it I just have to turn off when I okay. talk to people, You're or like I have to, me. or yeah, I I can, and I have to turn it off. Like dates can be kind of difficult sometimes. Oh. I'm like Angela, you need to turn this off. <laughs> And not read his body language and that he's so watching the football game instead of talking to you. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, it, it's, make sure it's all no interesting. Sports, make sure there's no sports bars. And then yeah, well, you know, if, if you like football, like I'm a big basketball fan. If you want to watch, watch basketball and sports, I'm not going to get mad about it. That's fine. Um, the Lakers are good. The Lakers are good. They're not good right now. I they're wish they were better right now. They're getting better. I like the, you like the young Oh, game. gosh. I mean, I think having Luke... Do you As like the Luke coach, move? I do. Okay, I, I think Luke moves great. Happy I think they've Luke's already up. reached their win total from last year. So. Oh, perfect! <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I mean, God, that was so fun. Yeah, I mean, and growing up in LA as a kid, like you just love the Lakers and you mm-hmm. hate the Celtics. <laughs> <laughs> Los Santo. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I, I don't Bill think I own any nine. Celtics, and Luke Walton played for the Celtics. So no, his Bill, his. Bill I mean, Bill Walton played, played for the Celtics, and, and I can't, I can't, yeah, I can't wear anything. I don't think I have anything green. I know this girl ended up in a group of Ugh. people that have like all my friends are basically all from New England, oh. and like. <laughs> Angela ended up working with all these people and being friends with all these people from Boston. She's like, oh, I don't even own anything green. I hate the Celtics. <laughs> and like now all like half of her friends are from Boston. I'm like, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I come with a whole group of people from there. <laughs> it's it, it helps, you know, with tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I suppose. laughs> They're all lovely people. And I'm happy. Listen, yeah, yeah, I, I never come back to Cape Cod. <laughs> I'll find Cape- another guitarist to play Cape, Cape Cod me. was so beautiful. <laughs> Oh my I god, know, right? I loved it. I had the best. The food there mm. was oh, yeah. amazing. Watching like, I can Angela's... almost cry about it right now. I'm not even joking. Like, they're starting. Was it Watching the... Angela's face, like, <laughs> eating, like, <laughs> scallops that, like, like in these state, like, straight. Oh. From, I mean, I, I grew up on this stuff. Like, I, I yeah. went out and used to dig clams and stuff with my grandpa. Yeah. Like, that's how we, and then we'd just walk up the hill and make steamers right away. And then my awesome. grandma would take the other half and make chowder. Like, that's how I grew up. That sounds great. So it just, like, watching her be there and, like, like seafood that I'm, I mean, it just, it comes right out of the ocean right there. And then you're cooking it. Like, and she, her face, like, she was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I really was though. I will totally. Uh, we're Italian. It. We will own that all day oh. long. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. And both both full full blooded Italian. No, I'm no. half Irish as well. Okay, I was gonna make a like a Boston like. Hey, she's probably. Yeah, I yeah, knew, yeah, I am. I knew about the Italian part. You're right. <laughs> but but yeah, and you yeah. are. Full, I am full. full. I am full. What blooded. part? You know what parts? My dad's side is from 60 miles south of Rome. It's a little town called Arpino. So for those of you who ever go there, mm-hmm. there's going to be people who, who look who sort of look like me, but but more tan, <laughs> darker. Yeah, for tan. And um, you got the northern California. I did. Um, I did. Or my, the northern uh, Italy. Yeah, my my mom's side um, is an hour out of Venice. Oh. So. So more they tend to more, be more is that, is north that Tuscan. Mom, it's not just um, quite like so north of Venice. It's so, so north of Venice. Yeah, like just northern. Okay. Northern Italy. Yeah. yeah. Northern Italy is that more mm-hmm. blonde hair, blue eyed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Venice was one of yeah. my favorite cities. That was like an experience. It's, I, would, oh, I'm sure. I spent like four days, three to four days in Rome in like the middle of the summer, oh, and it's it was hot. sweltering hot, and I hated it because <laughs> there was no like terrible. place to like calm, cool down. I think I went through the Vatican and almost had a heat 
exhaustion. It's it's a very <laughs> hot place. Rome is so cool though. It's just so it old. It is great. Yeah, it is great. But when I got we took the train to Venice and everything just cooled down like 10, mm-hmm. 15 oh. degrees with the breeze coming out. That was of the, probably heavenly. It was just like I, the city. I love the city. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Everything's great. And I didn't have to take a gondola. I walked through it the whole thing. Oh, it's yeah. great. It's it's, it's awesome. Beautiful. I've awesome. only been there a day. We stopped. Dana, I was ten. Yeah. I was ten years old yeah. when I went to Venice. I didn't I'd go my second time, but it was. It's, yeah. you I feel only very had a day at and home. a half, maybe two nights. So it was. I was just very short amount of time as yeah. well. But because we were getting a cruise to go yeah. out. Uh, so. It's all beautiful. It's such yeah. a beautiful country. I just yeah. I always feel very at home when I go. One day we'll tour there. Absolutely, <laughs> we will go. Just go back to the motherland. So I'm. Although I, I I was recently in Sydney, so I got a bit of a base tan when I was there because it's summertime there right now. But I she was... came back and was very excited to show me her tan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, cool. look, I have one. It's right <laughs> I got here. a tan line. <laughs> I've got some good like sandal tan happening. Nice. Um, yeah, it's it's a big deal for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I um, went to see my family. My 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 brother and my parents are a lot darker. Than I am. Okay. I look more related to them. I say you so do. It's like, you so do. <laughs> your dad and your brother. I'm like I kind of belong with them. Yeah, you yeah. just blend in. Yeah, you totally. could just be in the family photos. It's totally fine. But yeah, I went to. Um, it was uh, it was last there in 2007. All four of us we went, and um, my little cousin was four at the time, and her cute little Italian accent. Mm-hmm. And she she sees my my folks and my brother and she looks at me and she goes to my nana so my my Italian grandma and she goes is Angela sick? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm like no, I just sit inside and play guitar all the time so I don't get the sun. <laughs> I am well aware of my vitamin D deficiency. I know. <laughs> I'm aware. Thanks a lot, you little <laughs> four year old shit. <laughs> It was very. We still we still laugh. It's still very funny. Yeah, it is. is, is uh, so Arpino was. You said it, I'm sorry. it's it's southern Italy. So it's an hour. It's, it's between like Rome and Naples. Naples. Okay, so yes. would be. It's in Lazio, where okay where Rome is. Okay. So in the in the province is Frosinone. Okay, that's good to know. Duh. The claim to fame to Arpino is that Cicero was born there. So okay. And there's a stat. There's a statue in the town square, and he's pointing towards Rome. And there's a bit yeah. of like ancient rock and street that they have and mm-hmm. it's it's where cicero is he's pointing awesome. so yeah it's fun i it, can't wait to go back yeah it's I, I need to find an excuse to go back i gotta rack up I some need more to find miles money to go need back to find money <laughs> <laughs> that's just the main one so uh you've been playing you mentioned you were playing guitar since you were uh, oh gosh Ooh, do you want to guess <laughs> i'm gonna guess and say over under 12 under Eight. Nine. Close. Oh, okay. Dang. I, knew it was, I knew you it was like a prodigy level. Like, oh, gosh. You know. Well, um, there are trucks here. <laughs> do you no. Know, oh, my gosh. I love him. But not. I, I, oh, his slide playing is just amazing. I hope to one day play slide like that guy. Um, yeah, nine years old. Okay. Started playing. It was one of those things. My earliest memories was four years old. Was Music that? was always on and around. My mom plays a little bit of guitar. Mm-hmm. It was just one of those things I knew. It was just like you knew it was something you were just like you knew you had like oh absolutely yeah like I I would just watch my mom play and I I just remember God just some of my earliest memories I'm like yeah I could do that just like as easy as breathing that's how real it felt and it I, felt I, that natural and everything. oh yeah, yeah just watching her play like yeah was, like yeah the sky's blue I I'll, like I'll, yeah like <laughs> no but it was just it was just so in right. just deeply deeply ingrained it was just something I knew and and didn't know necessarily be guitar but I knew I was musical okay and then I wanted to be a drummer and was completely talked out of it <laughs> by my mom was that a noise issue or probably <laughs> probably yeah. like I don't usually buy, what it is yeah like I don't want to buy all that shit yeah. like here my mom's like guitar for the, you could bring it to the beach and i was like cool okay <laughs> so she bought me a guitar for you know for christmas santa, sorry santa brought me a guitar for christmas ah, santa got sorry me a mug. <laughs> um yeah. santa knew santa knew got me a guitar um yeah it was it just knew played it loved it awesome yeah yeah that, but i always wanted to play like as far as I mean, the keyboard was something that, like h3 but mm-hmm. i never i never had the um I never liked practicing because I always wanted to have that. I had that impatience to be like, I want to be good now. Yeah, that's not how it works. <laughs> you know, so it's nope. like drums were always more fun for me, and I, they they I apparently had the noise tolerance for, but yeah. I had the drum pads, the practice pads. 
I could play pads all over the place. Like I played this for probably like 27, like a million hours. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And my parents never yelled at me once. <laughs> never yelled at me once. Oh yeah. I mean. That was rough. I killed you. I <laughs> it was on that. Learn a difference. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, but it's Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> We get it. Um, you died. God, that is... <laughs> and it's After, like the fourth time hearing that riff, I'd be like, no, I'm good. Yeah. I don't even like Nirvana anymore. Oh, God. Parents have the patience. My my sister and my brother-in-law got my nephew a set of drums for Christmas. He's four. And it's oh, great. No. He's really good. <laughs> and they have a little studio office, and they, so they keep them in. So generally when he wakes up in the morning, he's not going straight to the drums. <laughs> he's also very obsessed with trains, so he usually goes, like, right to his train. Yeah. So at least we don't have that. But because they're not, but if they were in the living room, straight to him. And he, yeah. then he got a violin as well. Oh, my goodness. So he's, like. It's the cutest thing ever. It oh. is. It's really cute. But he's just, like, running around, just banging on, he's four, <laughs> banging on drums and, like, playing his violin. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm so, like. Just the patience parents have for that. Yeah. Like the patience my parents had for me. Right. Oh my god. Doing backflips all over the house and like singing all the time. Right. I would have killed me. <laughs> Shut up, kid. <laughs> no. So, Never. So how, of, how did you guys actually uh, meet? How did you guys get together? Um, we were in a um, country cover band together. So I, I had been hired on as the singer, um, and it was sort of me and some um, older gentlemen. I was the the young lass mm -hmm. singing. And um, if you will, and then they we needed a new guitar player, so they did a bunch of auditions, and it was like a bunch of dudes that I was like, I just want another girl in the goddamn band with me, preferably someone close to my age. And then my answer was um, answered, it, or my <laughs> question was answered, my wish was answered. If I could use my words correctly, I have only had like half of that margarita too. Maybe that's the problem. I need more of it. Um, and yeah, Angela came and auditioned and I was like, we're hiring her. And they were like, well, I mean, I was like, no, we should hire her. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know like what happened after I left. Oh, they were just like wanting to debate things and talk and be like, yeah, she was really good. She was, And I just kept going, no, 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 let's hire her. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you guys should hire her. <laughs> That's pretty much how that conversation went. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure you should hire her. Yeah, no, she was more prepared than anybody else and we should just hire her. <laughs> and they just like keep talking, and I'd be like, mm, I'm gonna leave now, but hire her. <laughs> Aw, thanks, That's pretty buddy. much how it went. <laughs> ah, they were a bunch of dudes just being like, well, I'll be the guy who's, and I was like, no, the guy sucked. <laughs> he didn't actually even know anything, so he wasn't even prepared for the audition. <laughs> so it's pretty much how that went. And then she got hired, and we slowly were like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we went and did our own thing. Yeah. So how long ago was that? Um, was that three years ago? I know. Three. Was that? Three and a half years ago. About, okay. yeah. And um, I had been working with uh, my friend Michael Lyons. Um, he is a bass player, a songwriter, a producer. Um, so I had written some stuff with him. And then um, Angela was like, Do you want? We were like, Let's rehearse together. And then she was like, Let's play like a open mic or something together. And then I was like, Well, my friend Jimmy owns a bar. Do you want to do the night before Thanksgiving? They want us to play. She was like, Yeah. I was like, Let me see if Mike wants to do it. And then he was like, Sure. And I was like, Do you want to play like two of the original songs Mike and I wrote? And she was like, Yeah. And then it just kind of nice. went from there. And then we started writing together. And then Mike produced our album and plays with us whenever he can. He's a very busy musician himself, but he is always our first bass player call. Gotcha. Um, so are you the two primary members in the band and you can yeah. just play with whoever is available or the, the people you like that are available? We have our, yeah, we have a rotation of, of, of musicians we that we love to work there. with. and um, Yeah, yeah, it just depends. Like, okay, we booked this gig and, you know, we call our guys. Mm -hmm. It's always fun. Like our friend Ted is in a band called The North. Um, and he's going to play percussion with us yes, at, um, NAMM. at NAMM. Okay. Um, so he can't always play with us either because he's got his own band. Right. Um, but so we've got, we have a good amount mm. of like rotating guys that we can call. That's great. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's fun. I'm sorry, Michael Lyons? Michael Lyons is okay. our producer. Yeah. And how, how was, um, you know, cause the, the record is, is great. Thank, Thank you. you. So it's really well done. Um, and the, the, the release party was also great. Oh, back thank in, you. In, that was a blast. The I can remember because it was the party. Pacquiao Mayweather. Oh, fight. my God, yeah. Yeah. 
I know. I was actually worried about that, that it was a Pacquiao fight. But then a bunch of people showed it. We just, sold it I out anyway. I just anyways, looked it so. up and apparently wasn't that interesting. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Eh, whatever. So, anyway. Rose and cigarettes seem better. So <laughs> the the process of making that record was... was, um, was oh, gosh. Was How many life. months did it take? So long. It was August. Yeah, we didn't finish recording until January. Not e- No. February. 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 Damn. Was it just... Oh, yeah. I, I mean, the... I took up a big chunk of that. I was nine weeks. <laughs> Oh, I yeah. Was Angelo, Angelo is the longest part of it, but Angelo laid every guitar track on that album. Yeah. So how, how long is the album? It's forty-one minutes. Forty-one. 41 minutes? Yeah, okay. yeah. Ten, ten tracks, forty-one minutes. Um, all the electric, all the acoustic, twelve-string mandolin. I did slide. Oh wow! Yeah. The only guitar ish thing she didn't do was uh, the pedal seal. <laughs> nice. Yeah, pedal seal was the only one I didn't do. Yeah. Every as long other... as you can find a room for a baritone guitar, go for it. God, that thing was so fun. That to was play. awesome. That's <laughs> on the track "Broken Down in Barstow," okay. which um, "Broken Down in Barstow" is the only track on that album that really is um, piano driven. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously we are a duo that is a guitar and <laughs> a singer, so songs. we're not going to do a bunch of piano driven songs. Um, but that one, that song was like there was so many different in. <laughs> incarnations of that song uh that it went like a million different places and like an alice in chains version at one point i think <laughs> there was no a, joke I wanted, i'm like, not even kidding it wasn't i wanted like a real dirty um i kind of wanted it to be kind of ryan bingham like dirty country so ryan bingham did all the music for crazy heart too so okay, or he did yeah. like a bunch not all of it but he wrote and performed some of the songs on crazy heart and um, he, he's just a really cool artist. And so I kind of wanted, he's got like this dirty rock country feel mm-hmm. and I kind of wanted it to be like that. Mike was like, he calls me Ernie. Ernest. Or Ernest sometimes. <laughs> We're going in another direction on this. And I was like, oh geez, here we go. This is like the fifth time we've changed the song. And he's like, we'll go on piano. And I was like, what? And then he was like, Ange, can you get a baritone? It's and a I was like, thick yeah, accent. sure. I'll find one. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'll learn how to play it the day before I go in and record it. <laughs> That'd be fine. For real, though, I did. Literally, exactly how it happened. <laughs> no, I did. She's I'm like, like, I picked up the baritone. I guess I'll be ready for tomorrow. Yeah, nice. like did did a quick study and went, all right, let's do this. Nice. It's a blast. It was fun. <laughs> it's that's my favorite vocal performance, if I must say, on the album. That's my favorite one. Well, I think it's your favorite one too because you got to sit back and relax. You didn't do it. Like, no, no, no. It's you my, didn't, fa- it's you my didn't favorite. Like, vocal. You didn't sweat blood, sweat, and tears like on every other one, doing eight bajillion tracks and like devoting your life to each one of those tracks. <laughs> I th- just take the damn compliment. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I don't like to. <laughs> anyway, I'll just say thank you. Thanks. We can move on. You're welcome. Perfect. <laughs> Should I make you uncomfortable? Is there a it story does. behind <laughs> that one? I've been broken down in Barstow uh, myself, um, so uh, so I can here's the thing: to that. so many people have been broken down in Barstow, which I think ass. is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and um, did the drugs begin to take hold? When I, yeah, no. <laughs> so it wasn't me that actually broke down in Barstow. I worked at a bar for a very long time, and um, two uh, regulars who are friends. Obviously, when you work at a bar for like ten years, there's mm-hmm. like a line <laughs> between regulars and friends that oh, gets yeah. very blurred. Yeah, um, and. So two customers that happen to be good friends came into the bar and they're like, well, we had a plan for today, but we think it's going to change. Our friend is stuck. Our friend was stuck in um, Barstow. So they literally drove out there to save her and they stayed overnight and like had the best time ever. <laughs> and so that really? is what the song is about. But it's in Barstow. it was. Yeah, they like went to some <laughs> random bar like they just there. They just could have fun anywhere like whatever they just decided to like be totally it's because it's random when yeah, you don't sure. plan when you don't plan something and you're like let's yeah, you go don't to have the, any expectations like we're in bar yeah. still let's go to that shitty bar over there and then all of a sudden you're like that was the best night ever <laughs> like what happened so um that's kind of what it was about or that's where they were just like we're driving to bar still and so i i kind of just was like that would make a really good song broken down in Barstow and then everyone I said that to was like I've been broken down in Barstow yeah. <laughs> I've been broken down so um, one of my friends that went out there he actually works for a um um like a car like, oh what is yeah it? he was works it? for some sort of like car and yeah. he has to travel around everywhere and um car repairs company or something he provides them and he went to his clients in Barstow and he's like you know actually my friend wrote a song like on my friend's album my friend's band's album they have a song called broken down in Bar-, and the guy was like Really? Is it a good song? <laughs> like, like, do you want to use it for a commercial, bro? Like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you'll have to pay for it. <laughs> we almost got, we almost wrote lyrics in, about getting stuck in Ukaipa. Stuck in Ukaipa? It was more about like getting lost and landing in Ukaipa, but. 
I like yeah. it. I was, I was, <laughs> when I was the current song to, we're working on, yeah, the the original title. I think you you what'd you call it? Was Yukaipa? I think it was just called Yukaipa. Yukaipa. <laughs> Yukaipa. <laughs> it was basically it was. Um, I was I was living in Northridge while I was going to school there, and David and, and uh, Eric would say, "Hey, go come on down. We'll work on some songs or whatever." Was that when we were gonna edit the music video? No, that was, was a that different, different one. Similar Same year, year. Yeah, Same yeah, year. 2011. I love how you're being so polite about it, Angela. I'm just like drinking with the ice Wait, hold on. the microphone. <laughs> Angela like goes to the side like a polite person. It's, I'm like, what? Yeah, oh, is that not supposed to be on the podcast? Don't chew my ice. Hold on. Yeah, had, it's water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've had songs. We've done it in the kitchen in um, the other the other house where we've had a kitchen and then there's just music playing and there's like our normal. Beef oh, session. Man, yeah. yeah. This is what we usually call the, you know, this is what we ter- a term called beef in it, which is why we be- have you know, beef. We cook beef. beef every I like week. It. All right. Yeah. Can I just say I to had- everyone listening that that tri tip was so damn good? <laughs> oh my God. It really damn was. Damn right it was. It was, uh, that was you, kudos oh, to you. Oh, thank you so much. That was it's, delicious. I'm, I'm glad you oh. liked it. That's. Nice. How many times on the road did I order like tri tip or like a tri tip sandwich? <laughs> everywhere we go, you usually have to. Well, not everywhere, but if we go, if we end up at a barbecue place or somewhere that has like it looks like a good tri tip sandwich, Angela's trying it. Yeah, and you can only get it on this side of the coast. Uh, yeah, I know. You know. It's a local thing, so. Um, tri tip. Yeah, yeah, it's like a Santa Barbara thing. Like nowhere oh, really? else. Like Santa you can't Maria get a tri tip in yeah. Boston. It's a certain cut. They I don't guess make. I've lived here for so long that I just didn't even think about. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, it's it's a I've California thing. Hmm? Oh wow! Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fancy. Santa Barbara Look, and like Buellton, right? It's it's that kind of. I think it's synonymous with Santa Maria barbecue. Santa Maria, yes, which is a little bit more north just, of Buellton, just a smidge near north. Guadalupe. Isn't that yeah. when we went to Pismo Beach for that for Mike's for our producer's wedding? You got that tri tip sandwich oh, on the barbecue oh, place. Right? Oh, I got that tri tip sandwich. <laughs> yeah, that I was. Forget a, what I, I think I just got ribs. I always get ribs. And then we got really drunk after. Yes. <laughs> nice. And that, yeah, it was delicious. So, it was, that was a fun weekend. Hashtag blame Jimmy. Hashtag <laughs> mimosa. <laughs> no, oh, that was, so we're at our producer's wedding and it's like, Oh God, that's my course, birthday too. So, but, have, yeah. you know, have you ever gone to a musician wedding? So going to a musician's wedding is like, it just kind of is going to turn into a jam at some point. Like, it's just going to. It, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. So they, they're they trying to control the jamminess of it. <laughs> so um, what they did was Friday night, they rented out a place in Pismo Beach. They had an open bar. Um, it wasn't a sit-down dinner. They just had some pass hors d'oeuvres, right? It was fabulous. It was just fabulous. It was fabulous. And they set it up where they could play some music. Or so the brothers, because Mike and his brother are in a band together. So they're like the Deltas, you know, another set of brothers making and the Zmeds, like brothers Mm -hmm. making music together. They toured all over in the 90s. They opened for Metallica. They Tony Bennett opened for them (laughs) in Boston, in the middle of Boston to 70,000 people because Tony Bennett heard them rock out during soundcheck. And he was like, that's not going to work before me we have to put them after like i'm tony bennett i need to do like a nice calm thing yeah and uh, like i'm gonna go all jazz on it and these guys are gonna rock out like it's 1977 and like they're all on drugs like and they did and they are just amazing but anyway so yeah we went to that wedding and it just so the brothers played with like a couple of their own old bandmates they had a band called the hookers Nice. We got to see it in the, the accent. The hookahs. There you go. We were in the, when we were in the hookahs, and then we got up and sang for a while. We did some originals and whatever, and the whole family was there. And then, like, slowly but surely, like, the family faded. Like, some of the family, yeah. like, the older aunts right. and uncles went home, and the guitars kept getting passed around. Someone started, turned something over and started using it as, like, a drum. Oh, God. Like, a tr- like an That's empty right. trash can <laughs> or something. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> and then, the, then I remember being fine, and then I remember wanting to walk walk out to the Uber and then our friend Jimmy go and drop me off. I want to dance the night away <laughs> and then waking up the next morning being, and I, and I Googled, I looked at Angela was like, I think we had two queen beds yep. and she was on the other one. And I was like, I need breakfast, but I need a mimosa. <laughs> and our friend Brie was one room over. So I texted her. I'm like, we're doing brunch. Do you want to come? She, yes, Jimmy's sleeping. Let's go. Where are we going? And I was like, I don't know, but I'm Googling brunch, Pismo Beach, and mimosas. So that I'm going to figure yeah. it out. You'll, you'll eventually keep running around, you, you know, between Grover really and nice, San Luis Obispo, you'll find one. We found a beautiful place, like on the water. Yeah, it was like a hotel right on the water. Yeah. And it was, it was my brunch birthday and mimosas. That day. It was your birthday. Nice. It was very nice. It was. It was a fun time. Wicked hang. But yeah, that is that is <laughs> that is how the musician wedding like always ends up going. Whether it's at the reception, the after party, the before party, the something. Well, I gotta find awesome. my way to crash one of these because I don't know if 
any of my musicians and friends are getting married anytime no, soon. No, probably not. But see, ever. you're in your 20s. Like, Mike's in his, was in his 40s. Like, so, I, so you got some time to I get got, there. I'm going through my quarter-life crisis right now. So oh, it's in, must be a quarter-life crisis. <laughs> it's in my bones. So you guys want to do uh, another, another number? <laughs> yeah, we were just, we were, Angela was just picking up my John Mayer vibe. Oh. Teddy, come here. You can't play the guitar. Just, my dog is trying to get all up in the Martin. <laughs> um, but John, who's one of the sound guys at oh Hotel Cafe. Oh my God, Cafe. Teddy, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy. Oh my gosh, you are so cute. He is the cutest little to. dog I know. with his little sweater. He is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Guitar ring out. <laughs> I know, right? When you get the wow. droney guitar stuff, you gotta. Your little dog tapping in the background. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, little percussion. It's fine. Yeah. Teddy, at least be on two and four, bro. <laughs> For real, please. Becky. <laughs> so I just had a curious, you know, about about the way you guys write. And if it's like, uh, it, how much is experiential? How much is just kind of what sounds cool? What sound, you know, if they're just. Um, Writing Try together. To think, sort of. Yeah, I mean, we definitely write together. We, it's like we sometimes we've gotten together and and been doing stuff, and then something comes together and we write. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, because she starts playing something, I get an idea, and that's just kind of how it goes. Um, but then sometimes I'll have an idea, or she'll have an idea. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of times she'll sh- more more often she has an idea on the guitar. All right. She records whatever it is, and then she just sends it to me. Um, but then sometimes I'll get something in my head and I'll mm-hmm. sing it to her, um, and she'll just kind of interpret what I'm what I'm doing, what yeah. chords I'm singing, and it's then we Jim kind of build Morrison it from there. Yeah, yeah, we kind of build it from there, and then um, and then a lot of then we take it to Mike a lot of times, mm-hmm. Mr. Michael, and then he um, he's like, "Girls, what if we dad did the thing here, and then we did this here?" And then we did this, and we're like, yeah, it's way better now. Is he from New York? About that. Uh, Boston. Fox, okay. He's, like, from Foxborough, too, which is, like, Annie okay. lived, <laughs> like, Annie lived in Boston. Does he so say it's we're like on to Cincinnati a lot? Huh? We're on to Cincinnati? We're on to oh, Cincinnati, yes. <laughs> we're on to Cincinnati. But, yeah, the it's a very collaborative okay. way that we yeah. write. It's a, it's a big back and forth. It's fun, and I just I'll I'll record even if it's like the slightest bit interesting to me. Mm-hmm. I'm like maybe she'll like it, and I just send her a ton of shit. And mm-hmm. I don't know if I, I inundate oh, you no, or not. No, 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 it's I fine. Because like to- what happened? A- Angela will sit around a lot and practice, and she'll come up with stuff. I'm more of like I have to be in the zone to want to write. Like I am not a person that's gonna sit and write a million lyrics. How do you usually get in the zone? Um. It's hard. I have to kind of be, I really do have to be in the mood. And sometimes it's a lot better for me if I take a backpack with water, food, a beach chair, and a beach blanket and go down to the beach mm-hmm. because I'm not looking at all the things in my house that need to be done. <laughs> um, yeah. That is the hardest part for me is like if there are dishes to be done, I have to do them first. If like yeah. there's a dust bunny on the floor, I want to get it because uh-huh. the mind wants to do anything right. besides like deal with the frustration of being creative because <laughs> even even if like you sit down and then the words flow out of you like magic, like some days they don't and that you take that journal and you throw it against the wall. Yeah. Um, so it's just always that like avoid, 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 avoid because I don't want to because it's going to be uncomfortable. And then you like dive in and I'll like write a verse and a chorus. And like I'm like, OK, I just busted that out real fast. Right. I did it. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then every time you do that, it gives you a little more confidence to write the next verse, you know, and yeah. then I'm like, OK, I can get to it now. I think starting is the hardest. So a lot yeah. of times it's great when she sends me things because then it sparks my like creative sure. idea. Especially if I can read it first thing in the morning. Teddy, then a key. No, Teddy. No, Teddy. I have a dog over here who who I got from Mexico who oh, yeah. speaks half Spanish. So in, in even lyric, I take it you write majority of the lyrics? Yeah, but not. Uh, it's the same way. Not all. You know. I mean, Angela's written lyrics too. It kind of whatever. I don't. I don't think there. are... We don't really like to put rules on it. Like I've written something on the guitar before too. That I want to say even most of. Gi- I mean, Gypsy Woman. Like that chord progression was you. Yeah, my verse chorus. Mike changed you know? it. Yeah, the verse chorus. I mean, I don't play guitar very well. So if I get an idea on the guitar, it is going to be very limited because I am a C, G, D, E minor, A minor. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know some sevens, uh, you know, but I'm not. I, I stick bar to the chords are like, myself. You know, <laughs> bar chords makes me want to like kill myself. <laughs> I stick with my country chords and. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, at, at least I can get an idea and then her or Mike, our producer, or the two of them together, hey, Ladybird, um, they make it, they, they make it more interesting. They do the good stuff. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Like, there have been times where we get together and it's, we'll like just be rehearsing and oh, okay, play that again. Like, what was that? That was kind of cool and mm-hmm. we'll kind of riff on it or whatever. And then other times it's, I sent her, you know, a song and then she's like, hey, wrote some lyrics. I'm going to sing it for you. What do you think? You know, and go about it that way. So it's fun to have both sides of it where it's not just like, okay, every Thursday we get together and we do this. So it's very much like kind of on uh, over the course of. Well, I mean, you can't force it because if you force it, you'll be able to tell in the music. Yeah. 
I can see so that. it's it's all yeah, just very organic and idea swapping. And yeah, I but I think it's more fun that way when you're in a band together. And I don't know, I I, I like the the collaboration and the sharing of ideas and. Mm-hmm. You know, there have it been plenty. You better. Yeah, you know, there have been plenty of times like I will write something on guitar and I'll kind of have a melody in my head, but I'll never share it with Jenny because I'm like, okay, I, I just want to see what she'll come up with. Sure. Shit, like it's always better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it is where she just goes with my idea, but you <laughs> we know, have fun. Well, but it's, it's nice. I can understand. Like I'm always like, oh, no one's gonna like this idea. It's like, but it's uh, but it's neat. But that's you know. And I think we, we each respect the other's process, too, mm-hmm. and how we work. And then we just, and then we'll work together. Mm-hmm. So it's fun. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that kind of, that is our process for what we do right now. Mm-hmm. It could change, you know, at any point. Angela could write a whole song and have lyrics and everything one day and be like, hey, I feel really strongly about this song, like, <laughs> you know, and yeah. the melody and everything. And mm-hmm. But I love it. Then we perform it. Like sure. it's not. I'm not going to be like, well, I didn't write the lyrics and melody, so I'm not yeah. doing it. Like right. our rule, and they say it. <laughs> actually, it's very funny because it was said in country strong, and my my our my producer Mike was like, Ernie, that's actually a very real moment right there. The best song wins. Doesn't yeah. don't get caught up with whether you wrote it or she wrote it or Mike wrote ninety percent of it, but it works for us. The best song wins. Right. And if what you're coming up with isn't as good, like as your bandmate, you got to let it go and say like, you know what? They did better. Right. And I think, so, that's a, that's, I think both of us are kind of, Oh yeah. Best song. idea, best song. It's yeah. Always, it's always, uh, you can always feel better that you're always taking the best approach. Like we have we one of our new songs is called, um, echoes and silence. And yeah, I just love, Oh yeah. Like yeah. just the melody in that is just so cool. Mm-hmm. And so not what I had in mind. I'm like, damn, like that was really cool. Right. That's really cool with what's going on. It was fun. That's a fun one. Yeah. Um, But yeah, it's a fun process. Mm -hmm. Follow frequently, you guys, on the Instagrams. On the Instagrams. So we can talk about that. (laughs) We know. Thank you for the support. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much. First off, we saw that the um, you guys were at that John Mayer. Yes. Dave Chappelle. Oh, she can tell you that I completely lost it when that happened. <laughs> she did. She grabbed my arm. I might still have a bruise. <laughs> no. But you, she you, you was there to see somebody else, somebody else right? Huh? It was he, somebody else was I don't supposed know. to be there. We got wind that John no. Mayer was going to yeah. be there. Oh, okay. We found out from someone oh, that yes. he was going to be there, and so we bought our tickets before he announced it. Oh. Suckers. Suckers. <laughs> yeah. It's like when the Stones. And then out. everybody hated us. <laughs> Everyone like, hates us. It's okay. It's, it it's was like when the Stones played the Echo when they did the Dodger Stadium the night b- the day before. And they oh, just went yeah. across the street, across the hill, did right. the Echo. And they just Let's went go to play, play the, echo. the Echo. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's like oh, I know. I go there all the time. I yeah. Know. <laughs> when that was a moment for me, it was like, oh, John Mayer plays at Hotel Cafe for $10 all the time. Why have I never, I've lived here for 13 years. Why have yeah. I never seen this? And finally it popped up. I got the tickets. I was like, we're going to see John Mayer. No. I cried. I don't know about you, but I did. Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Okay. I mean, during the show, like yeah. 17 different times. Okay, good. Me too. <laughs> but Dave Chappelle was amazing. He was hilarious. He what was, was he? lighting cigarettes on stage. Nice. Him and John were just like singing karaoke together. And <laughs> I mean, his show was so genius and so oh, yeah. just innovative. Which, God, Chappelle We're talking about Chappelle's show. show. Okay, yeah. 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 Uh, we're still quoting that to. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there's so. I, I studied parts of the, uh, part, like episodes of his show at UCLA. We oh, like really? refer, I swear to God, refer to, to, to scenes in the Chappelle Show. That's I awesome. Mean, I, just, just the, there'll be quotes that we'll just do quotes, you know, uh, just as reference to jokes. Like oh, even yeah. when I'm working with somebody. Oh, yeah. So I'll be like, um, <laughs> and sometimes I'll accidentally say, like, if someone asks me if you want to do something, I'll just go, yes, yes, I'll like that very much, please. Yes, I'll like <laughs> that very much, please. From the trading, trading wife's, the. Yeah. It's just like very much he he was just hilarious and they played him and John they were like what should we play what should we play and Dave Chappelle was like we do this in Manhattan till like five o'clock in the morning and John was like Meh. you know and he was like, <laughs> yeah. John was like started playing Come As You Are right yep. or no it was Come As You Are correct oh yeah um, <laughs> see it's every guitar player's favorite song he and just Angel, started doing Angel's it Angela's mom started shouting stop playing that same song <laughs> yeah Angela's mom you like, from- damn it <laughs> Um, but uh, then Dave Chappelle was just like, oh, John, I don't know these lyrics. All I remember from this time period was <laughs> fake nipples and a bunch of blonde pubes. 
<laughs> at that point, I just like started dying laughing. I was like, oh, oh that is such a Chappelle thing. To it was say. a fun show. Because, yeah, it was John Mayer on a, a, just acoustic. Uh-huh. And that was it. I've always wanted to see him like that. Like that was And then he played rad. the piano. And there's pictures of us from uh-huh. that show. Someone took pictures of us next to the piano. I'm kind of it's, hiding yeah, behind the oh, piano trying to peek around. I'm literally like looking directly. Like I could have just been like, like put my hand on his like that <laughs> while he was playing. And been like, this is, is this creepy? Yeah. No? This do, you is, get a, do you get a weird, have you you've played is, the big room, right? You've, as, I know you played the other We played the side. small room and the big room. Okay. We played both. Yeah. So, when you so get he was like model. literally standing where I stood during the show playing. And I was like, oh. Ah. And then Chappelle was right where you were. <laughs> Die. You get that chill of like, Die. I was there. Yeah. I know how that. Oh my God. Him I know that and Louis C.K. to me are just. You, you uh, Angela, have your own little following of 50,000 people. <laughs> Very small following. <laughs> Tiny. Oh, I'm sorry, 50,000 in, in, a, in, a, in a tenth? I think, I think it's 51. 50.1? No, I think. I don't know. Um, I do, yes. I, thanks, I, for, um, thanks for the stat correction there. On the yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy to me. I don't know. I, I did it. I started it on Thanksgiving last year, so Thanksgiving of twenty six. And it was just on your that was your own solo thing for for. Well, a- it was something I it was something I wanted to do, like just something to look forward to every day that pushed me to learn songs that either I've always wanted to learn or mm-hmm. songs that I wanted to get better at, and it was something just a, a good, just positive, joyful little thing that I could do for myself every day. And then it's like, okay, you know, and I'll just, I'll just post them up and whatever. I did, I just did it just as a personal thing for me. Mm -hmm. And okay, these are the guitars I like, and these are the songs that I like, and these are the songs that built who I am as a player. Right. You know, guitar players that I look up to are songs that just like, it's always, I love and. It's always a cool variety of, of songs that you play on there. I will not play anything I don't like. Mm -hmm. All of those songs I have on my iPod. I listen to those songs, (laughs) all those bands, you know. Yeah, it was just it was it was a thing for me to push myself as a player to do because it's I mean, you put yourself out there. I mean, you know, we know as as musicians, okay, we're we're putting our art, something that is incredibly deep, something we are very passionate about, something that comes from a very deep, soulful place. And then, you know, in the age of social media, which is something you have to do these days to promote yourself and, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do it. And it's going to be a little awkward for me in the beginning. Yeah. It's going to be a little strange, but I'm just going to, I'm going to do it. And I just did it for me. Did, had you told me when I started, you're going to have 50,000 followers in 13 months, I'd tell you you were full of shit. Yeah. I'd tell you you were full of shit. Cause that's, it's bonkers and it's crazy, mm-hmm. but it comes from a very real and honest place for me. I don't, I, I, I do it cause I love it and I love the instrument and I'm thankful every day that I get to make music out of a, a hollow piece of wood with <laughs> strings on it no but really i mean it's it's a hollow piece of wood with strings on it i'm thankful that i can express myself through through this strange it's a strange object and i get to make music out of it right and i get to make music with my friends like it's just it's i'm thankful That's, so it's what it's best thing you could do with it is the this. best thing ever it's the best thing ever and i'm incredibly thankful and just humbled by people who write you know cool things and people who get inspired by, you know, my videos. It's like, geez, you know, I'm, I'm here just playing a couple chords and playing some licks and things that I like, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I've had people like, Hey, I, I've, I've got a daughter who's six years old and really wants to learn how to play guitar. And she watches your videos and I went and bought her a Fender Strat today. Oh, so, cool. so she can learn how to play and she's, you know, like stuff like that. Like that's that's awesome. awesome. And like, I had a guy message me, and he's like, hey, my son, my son is six and they're from, they're from England. Okay. Right. We're in LA right now. <laughs> he's like, hey, my son asks before he goes to bed, if he can watch some of your videos and we'll sit and watch your videos wow. every night before he goes to bed. That's what he wants to do. And I'm like, you know, that's awesome. He's like, my son also noticed that you've never paid, played back in black. He wants to know if you can play it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and that was one, cause that's an, e- I mean, it's an oh, easy cool. yeah. lick. Yep. You know, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to play it for that six-year-old kid. Because how jazzed would I be at six years old seeing some guitar player that I really liked on a phone, Yeah. by the way, which is also crazy. Right. You know, uh, from across, you know, an ocean. Fits in your back pocket. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, sure, I will play that song. And I I posted it for him. 
hadn't planned on ever playing that riff because yeah. it's you know it's a simple riff but it's a cool riff and yeah and the kid sent me a little video back he's like thanks for thanks for playing that song for me <laughs> so now that kid's gonna learn how to play guitar like that's just right. the best because this is yeah like this thing has helped me a lot it, it it's a good i don't know i'm just i'm just i'm i'm thankful and I just play stuff I like. It comes from a very honest place. So it's, it's great. All the followers who watch the videos and all that stuff. I mean, it's 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 leaps and bounds of what I ever thought it would be, and and you know, and what it's done for you know me as a player and musician, and what it's done for us as Roses and Cigarettes and as a band. I'm incredibly mm -hmm. grateful. So that these people stick around and and look forward to watching these videos. <laughs> this is pretty cool. So and, thankful. And my my dad now religiously watches the Norms Rare Guitar. Oh, yes. On the channel, yeah, it's just like, oh, what day of this? What's what's Str oh, yeah. Saturday? And I go, I think my friend's on that show. I think my friend's <laughs> on that show. They're and great. Lo and behold, there arms. you are playing playing uh, the opening of Crazy Crazy on you. Yeah, and, and some of those other stuff. So yeah. it's like, that's it's it's so cool to see. You're like, oh, sh oh shit, there she is. That's so they're cool. good. They're good folks. They um. Yeah, I went in there one day because I, I had I had tried to stay away for as long as possible because I knew I would buy something I couldn't afford <laughs> in that place. And I, I walked in because I was going to get my passport expedited for my trip to Sydney. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? Norm's is 10 minutes away. I'm just going to go. I'm not going to buy anything. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. And I'm going to look. There might be a cool vintage Martin. Yeah. Play that. I'm not going to play the vintage Strats. Cause they're just so beautiful. They're, they're so like, Oh my God. But did they approach you or in. did you approach them? I just went in and played and they're like, Hey, like you can play. And I'm like, cool. Okay. He's like, God, we'd love to, you know, you got a band. We'd love to interview you and feature your guys' music on our videos. I'm like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and they've been incredibly lovely and generous. And yeah, I, I look forward to working with them more in the future. So they're pretty great. Yeah. Cause there's a, there's quite a few, quite a few names I think Joe Bonamas is like in there every he, other show. He was show. there today. It was there. <laughs> you were there today? He was there today. Like, so you were there as well? I, I wish I was there today. Oh, okay. I, he's a lovely guy. I've, I, I've met him like two years ago. He's super cool. Such a nice guy. But yeah. So I, I think we're almost done. But I just want to know uh, just kind of basic influences, you know, what you guys, you know, just uh, where you feel that you got your, developed your style from, mostly from like. Just in, um, as, either yeah. as people or oh yeah no I mean I grew up listening to so much music in my house my my dad was a musician so in my house it was like such a combination of like crazy stuff it was like Frank Sinatra and you know Natalie Cole and Harry Connick Jr. one day and then the next day it was like the Eagles and Linda Ronstadt and Joe Cocker and James Taylor and Bonnie Raitt constantly um, so it just had. I had such a mix of people growing up. Mm -hmm. And then as I developed, um, you know, John Mayer was a big one. I always really liked him. Um, India Ari, neo soul singer, oh, yeah. who's yeah. just amazing. I love her. Um, Patty Griffin, mm -hmm. Fleetwood Mac. Um, Ray LaMontagne, obviously, is a big one. That's where oh, we got yeah, our yeah. the band name from, one of his songs. Um, yeah, I mean, it just, it comes from all over the place. But those are some big ones that I just, I feel like I listened to so constantly growing up and nice. in my adulthood. You know? Oh yeah. Gosh, give me, I have so many. My iPod's so all over the place. Like I mean, everything <laughs> from like Pearl Jam to Muddy Waters. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, oh gosh. Yeah, Fleetwood Mac, Stevie Ray Vaughan, mm -hmm. Led Zeppelin. Did I mention I love Pearl Jam? I love Pearl Jam. I think, I think. Okay. I'll yeah. Go. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good thank you. <laughs> um he's been working on it yeah it's better it's Gosh. A, thank you i mean yeah like all the john mayer so many god chili peppers mm -hmm. chili peppers incubus i love they were they used to skate at my uncle's house really they're they're, they're, they're local here oh i know more park i think the singer's awesome. mom yeah. officiated my cousin's wedding really yeah so Weird six steps to oh name drop totally. there. No, no, that's a, anything with but, Brandon Boyd. My ears are gonna perk up. Yeah. So my uncle used to have a, my, my cousin used to skate was a uh, was a skater, and so yeah. my uncle built a half pipe in the backyard. Oh, that's and so cool. Come out and skate. Yeah, those guys. Yeah, as far as players, Patty Griffin's um, "Living with Ghosts" that was one of the first albums I remember hearing a lot as a kid mm -hmm. and it's an acoustic record it's vocals right. and acoustic and that's it 
Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's why, like, I just love what we do so much. Cause it's, it, it just, it's, it's there's that. a nice, it's nice from, like, my earliest memories of music and then I get to do it. Oh, here. that's so cool. It's kind of neat. Um, yeah, that's always been very special to me. Um, gosh. Yeah. Uh, just all that, all those old guitar players, you know, the Jimmy pages and, and Dwayne Allman and, Mm. Oh my gosh! Yeah, all that BB King, I love Buddy Guy, all those guys, it's bluesy just, guy. Anything you, just, you know what you do? You do just like say, okay, here, this is the 2005 Crossroads Guitar Festival lineup, oh, and you just I slap watch that. that. In. <laughs> I watch that and study. Oh yeah, I watch it and yeah. study and Clapton and. Oh yeah, we. Oh God, my dad listened to so much Clapton in the house growing up. We had so much Clapton. I learned to love Ginger Baker because of the, um, because of listening to, because wanted to listen to Eric Clapton. So as like a mm-hmm. four year old, five year old kid, I'd have the drum pads, and I I wanted to. I didn't know how to play guitar, and I really didn't really want to learn how because of the patience factor I was mentioning yes. earlier. <laughs> yes. And. Um, but drums were You easy. have the personality for but, it, or you but, don't. The drums, drums were like always. They came more natural to me, and they were fun to play. And so that would play like best hits of Cream. Over and, and I'd, over. But I knew I couldn't play guitar, so I'll just play drums. So I'd learn to like, do the God, that's d- so Ginger cool. Baker Tom fills and stuff. I still want to so. learn drums one day. I want to learn one song really well, like an ACDC tune or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she keeps saying that. She's like, I'm oh. learning one song and then we're performing it. And I'm what, like, just oh, one? Just and it's it. like, it's like, yeah, Angela, you know anything else on the drums? Be like, nope. Nope. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it. And I nailed it. And that's all you're ever getting. <laughs> oh, one day. I, I dream about that. Like, I still have dreams of being a drummer. That's, I, I, I I'm serious. We should we, just, we should find a way to make this happen. <laughs> <laughs> just one song really well. There's amazing. Yeah. Thank you for having so, us yeah, so much. Yeah. yeah, we're really glad you guys could come on. You know, we're uh, we don't get many legitimate uh, guests right now. We're working towards that. So <laughs> this is gonna be <laughs> awesome to to put up. I'm I'm glad we so, could have you here. Hell Thank yeah. you so much. And Thank you, you for having yeah, us. When we get to the point, come back. Absolutely. And, and to yeah. jam, we'll have a point where we can jam with the Psychedelic Space Beef Band. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, as long as you let me be the drummer. <laughs> you know what? For I'll one t- song. T- you know yeah, what? That, that's Steve's call. That's, I'm, I'm using the drummer, so okay. <laughs> this, this could guitar. happen. It's fine. Exactly. So you guys will have we'll to switch. Lessons. Yeah, we'll trade you'll lessons. you'll yeah. give him you'll let him master like a three chord song, and then I he'll need, get you to master the, the drums on the song. <laughs> oh wait, can you play? Are you actually? A, hold no, on. not really. Could no. He could play things, you know. He, he can play he, things. I can pick out. He's I thought he said he does guitar. Oh, oh shit, well, then he knows as much as I do. <laughs> It was actually our high school band's uh, probably most popular song. So yeah. There, oh well, look at him then. <laughs> totally. Uh, do you want to do whiskey down? Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll do whiskey yeah, down. Yeah, we'll close all right, let's out. plug it. We'll close out. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. yeah. Thanks again. It was it was great to have you. Thank oh, you so much for having, having us. us. So we're roses and cigarettes. Yeah, and this is um, our original song called Whiskey Down. <laughs> All right, Teddy's amused. You can find us on Facebook at Roses and Cigarettes Band. On Twitter at Roses Cigarette. Instagram at Roses and Cigarettes Band. And on Pandora or SoundCloud or iTunes. Spotify. Spotify. Yeah, and uh, rosesandcigarettes.com. You yeah, can keep up go. with us there. Didn't know just what to do Cause every little thought in my head was about you Got out of bed, looked in the mirror Had this vision that couldn't have been clearer So I called up my best girl, said what'll it be? Cause this is the last time he's ever gonna leave me Make it on the double Cause I can see you're ready for trouble Tonight, tonight I'm going out Straight till dark Me and Jack Daniels are gonna push the limits
between right and wrong This bottle of booze never lets me down The way you do So I take another shot of whiskey down One for me and one for you Another shot of whiskey down One for me and one for you Tonight, tonight I'm going out Straight till dawn Me and Jack Daniels are gonna push the limits Between right and Another shot of whiskey down One for me and one for you So I take another shot of whiskey down One for me and one for you So I take another shot of whiskey down One for me and one for you 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 Oh